until you startled me. You really mustn't creep up on people like that. Well, yes, I suppose I am. Uh, Dr. Weston Lesko's my name, and it's uh, good to make your acquaintance. Uh, what brings you to my little experimental ecosystem? My experiments are of a complex nature and would take a scientist to explain. Oh, wait! I'm a scientist! How marvelous! My foray into reducing the girth of these insectoid creatures is of utmost importance. I intend to generationally reduce their immense stature by way of a pre-birth induced mutagen. Isn't that clever? It's always staggering just how low the intellectual level of the typical wastelander appears to be. Let me try and explain. The ants are very, very big. I want to make them very, very small. So I put a special medicine in the eggs to make them small after they hatch. <laughs> I don't expect a common wastelander to understand the intricacies of an experiment this delicate. There was an error in my calculations that caused my mutagen to allow the ants to develop a, a new biomechanism. I call their genetic aberration pyrosis, the ability to emit flame from their bodies. I may be able to correct this error, but I can't get near my equipment. A small price to pay for the advancement of science. A few die and later, after the mutagen is improved, many more will live. That's the way it's done. The only way to correct this mistake is to modify the mutagen. I must get to my terminal. My portable terminal is set up in the hatchery chamber near the Ant Queen. If I can reach it, I can continue to work on improving the mutagen. Oh, no, no, no. The queen mustn't be harmed at all. Months of work would be lost. Your objective would be to eliminate what I call her quintet of nest guardians. Ooh, filthy little abominations. No, it should all wrap up rather nicely. I've rigged my equipment at my portable terminal to emit what I call an inhibitor pulse. Once I send this pulse, all of the remaining ants will lose their empathic link with the queen and frenzy destroying each other in the process. So that's all there is to it. What do you say? Yes, I suppose you're right. Science must learn to acquiesce to your standards in order to advance itself. I was merely going to offer up one of my mutagenic bio-enhancers, but I suppose I could up the ante. I will also award you with my old lab coat. It served me well over the years, and you may find it useful for your own experiments. I've managed to isolate some of the fire ant genes and distill them into human safe genetic enhancers. I can inject you with one of these formulas and you'll find yourself with either enhanced strength or enhanced perception. Not only that, but you'll be somewhat more resistant to fire. How marvelous! You will? How marvelous! Be careful, my friend. The nest guardians can be quite tenacious. Oh my, yes, they're quite marvelous. There are many that say it can't be done, but I'll prove them wrong. 
By introducing my mutagen directly into an ant egg, I hope to reduce the size of the adults. This is a generational system, meaning it will take quite a few broods before the ants are at their destination size. In the end, I hope to make them as small as they were over 200 years ago. Destroy? Oh, no, no, no! You mustn't do that. It's my life's work. Just clear me a path to my equipment and I'll do the rest when you tell me it's safe. Yes? Well, the mutagen has enhanced their fortitude and provided them with what I call pyrosis, the ability to emit flame biologically. They're quite radiation-free, however. Well, as radiation-free as any other mutated creature in the wasteland. Playing with genetic codes isn't simple. Do you realize one tiny tweak at any point in the last million years could have completely changed us? Going from attempting to change their size to generating their pyrosis ability is no surprise at all. I'm afraid they are not susceptible to anything I can think of that wouldn't harm the garden variety giant ant. Just aim for their antennae if you can. It will confuse them quite a bit. The stimulation of the subject's evolutionary trigger by the mutagen caused a biodefensive reaction metamorphosing the ant's venom glands. This process caused unexpected oscillations in the venom molecules at such a vast rate it produces a thermodynamic biochemical reaction. As the subject ejects the volatile solution, it becomes conflagrant due to new structures in its maw I call its calefaction array. Amazing, isn't it? Yes? Far too curious. His incessant questioning would often come when I was the most absorbed with my calculations. He had no regard for the importance of my work. You have your ideals and I have mine. I'm down here to complete my experiments at any cost. If that means the loss of a few lives to save generations of lives in the future, it's a small price to pay. All scientists take responsibility for their failures because it comes with the territory. I will take this experimentation to completion without roosting on the moral high ground. If I allow emotions to enter the mix, all this time and energy spent will have been for nothing. I can't risk leaving this place. I have to continue monitoring the hatchery for any further mutations in the next brood. I have no time for children and their petty games. What do they know about the importance of my work? Yes? Much to do, so much to do. I suppose I could answer a few more questions. 